Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So in case if you are preparing for CSNET exam, I am here to talk about that how you can maximize your marks in exam, how you can actually score more than 150 marks in exam by applying some strategies by making or by modulating your approach for the exam. All right. These are some practical things which you can actually think of and you can apply in your exam and that can definitely fetch you to get up. Uh, get some good marks all right so having said that i will first of all tell you some of the mistakes which people do okay generally there is a mindset that the general cutoff goes for 110 marks for i'm talking about chemical sciences okay obc cutoff goes around 100 marks so that's that's the general mindset in students and when they sit in the exam they try to uh, like count how much marks they have attempted so by the end of the exam if they have attempted let's say 110 marks they or 120 marks they don't attempt more questions out of fear that they might get negative marks okay and because of that they just they are just stuck to let's say they have just attempted the paper of 120 marks you can never expect getting 120 marks if you have attempted the exam of 120 marks that is never going to happen because that there is certain thing called as accuracy to correction ratio and nobody is 100 percent accurate okay you will be making some mistakes you will be getting some negative marks and if you attempt 120 marks your actual marks in exam will be somewhere around 80 or 75 depending upon how accurate you are but yeah that's the average which you are going to get so the first approach or the first thing which we have to fix is we have to maximize our target we don't have to stick to 120 or 100 marks in the exam we have to actually add at least 50 marks more to our tar target so always whenever you are sitting for the exam when you are approaching the paper how much question you have to attempt how much uh, you know how much question you are going to attempt in exam if you have that thought in your mind then always think of 160 plus i would always suggest that and it is not difficult okay it is easy you just have to follow up whatever I'm going to say in the video, okay? So you have to actually approach 160 plus marks in exam. You have to attempt 160 plus marks in exam. If you will attempt 160, then after that, after doing, after your mistakes and after, you know, your uh, negative marks and all, you will end up getting 120 or 110, depending upon how good you are with, with the things, okay? But yeah, you should definitely go more than 160. That is always, always recommended. So make that point in clear in your mind that you don't have to stick to 110 or 120 in exam. You have to approach or you have to attempt 160 plus marks in exam. That's the first and most important point. Now coming to the second thing that how we can actually, uh, like how we can score that much marks because 160 is a big score, how you can attempt that much. So for that, the thing which will help you is part A. Part A carries 30 marks. It's very crucial 30 marks. I'm not telling you to approach all the 15 question of part A. I'm just telling you to do at least five questions. If you do five questions, you are getting 10 marks. 10 marks in part A is very, 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 very important. And that can easily take you from, JR, from LS to JRF. So it is highly recommended that you should at least try to attempt some questions from part A, whatever you are able to do. Try to give at least 30, 25 to 30 minutes to part A in exam. That is super important because see, if you see from the weightage point of view, part A and part B have same weightage. You are going to get same marks. In part B, you have to do 35 questions out of 40. In part A, you have to do 15 questions out of 20. Doing part A questions are comparatively easier compared to doing chemistry questions. That's because part A questions in part A, you will get some logical questions, some, uh, you know, data interpretation type of questions. So at least you can do five questions and that will compensate your part B questions. Okay. So second most important point is that you have to give some importance to part A. You have to at least give 20 to 30 minutes to part A in exam and at least try to attempt minimum five, maximum 15 questions from part A. Okay. And those marks are going to be very crucial and those are going to be those are going to be the deciding factor for you okay so make sure you do that and you will thank me later okay third point is that you have to take part c very seriously part c is the portion of the exam which is definitely going to give you a hard negative mark and a good positive marks because each correct question each correct answer is going to give you four marks each incorrect question is going to give you one minus so basically whatever you have attempted let's say if you have attempted 110 marks one wrong question will make it five minus but why because four marks which you are expecting to be correct that is going to go and one negative mark so you are now one with one ne wrong answer your score is now 105 with two wrong answers your score is now 100 with three wrong answers you are out of jrf uh, race so you are like 95 so 
you have to take part c very seriously you have to give time to part c and only do those questions or only choose those questions in which your confidence is high with my experience i'm telling you that i have always found organic chemistry very difficult it's i have always accepted that and again i'm telling for me organic chemistry is not that easy and it's confusing it's not about that i don't understand the concepts i can solve questions based upon concept but in exam it is confusing and that's why i avoid doing organic chemistry questions in exam because there are high chances that if i attempt i'm telling about myself okay it does not apply on you i'm just telling my scenario if i am giving a, a exam and if i attempt organic chemistry question there are high chances that they are going to get wrong and i'm going to get negative marks of that so instead of that i will do physical chemistry question and if i will i have to do some organic chemistry question i will do those questions in which my confidence is high for example i will do spectroscopy question i will do uh, questions related to pericyclic reactions so those which i'm quite confident that yes this is going to be answered especially in point part c I'm going to do that part okay so whatever is your strong zone if your strong zone is organic chemistry do organic chemistry question in majority in part c if your strong zone is physical chemistry do majority questions from physical chemistry in part c see from every part from organic inorganic and physical you are getting 20 questions each in part c so you have uh, like 60 questions out of those you do only have to do 25 right to choose wisely which 25 questions you are doing i have seen many students who are very knowledgeable who are very good with the concepts but in exam they are poor in choosing those 25 questions and when they are not able to choose those 25 questions correctly then the result is the marks that they are getting less marks as expected okay so yeah part c is very important you have to focus on part c and try to attempt all 25 questions from part c you cannot just do 15 or 20 questions from part c and expect to get 160 marks you can never get that you can never pass that score unless and until you do 25 questions from part c so make sure in exam you have to do 25 questions from part c you cannot escape out of that at minimum you should do 22 questions not below than 22 questions in part c okay so minimum 22 and maximum 25 is the number of questions which you have to attempt from part c make sure that this should be your approach for part c talking about part b now part b i think is the is more challenging it it is not it's not that this particular part has more negative marking or marks wise it's not that challenging but uh, in part b also there is no option of choosing the things but the thing is that in part b questions look very easy like when you read a question it looks like oh it's so easy but there will be some concept uh, which will be hiding behind and it might not strike to you and you might end up doing it wrong so it's always recommended that in part b you have to be alert okay when you're doing question of part b be alert over there you have to do attempt like out of 40 questions you have to attempt 35 questions that's the maximum which you can attempt i would suggest you to at least do 25 questions from part b okay so 25 questions part b 25 questions part c and you have to do at least 5 to 10 questions from part a and in that way if you are able to count them so 25 questions from part c is going to give you 100 marks you are you have attempted paper of 100 marks 25 questions from part b is going to give you 50 more so 150 and if you have done five questions from part a 160 so you have attempted a paper of 160 so this is how you have to make an approach your plus or minus you can do questions among part a and part b because both of them have similar weightage but part c you have to be very focused and you cannot escape out part c you have to attempt uh, you have to approach at least 25 questions from part c okay that is very very important and like sometimes it happens that you are able to do let's say 15 or 16 questions and out after that you start feeling that i should not take risk in other questions see by just doing 15 or 16 questions that's not enough you will not reach the cutoff okay you have to take risk now so even if you have done with 15 questions and you are like i i don't know the answers of other or i'm confused with the answers of other go take a chance okay there are when you take a chance there is 25 percent possibility that the option which you have chosen is correct right so go with that possibility go with the go with the logic which you have in your mind and try to do all the 25 questions if you have done let's say 20 22 questions and you are you you are thinking that i don't know more or i don't want to take risk then you can stop yourself 22 questions if you have done 
with confidence you can escape out three others like you should you cannot like don't take risk in the other three but if you have just done less than 20 questions in part c if you just know or if you have just solved less than 20 questions in part c it is always recommended that take a chance take risk and complete 25 questions uh, you it's not gonna happen that you don't know anything about the answer you might be confused between two options or you might be having something in your mind apply that okay apply that and do complete all the 25 questions doing 15 16 question is not going to help you in part c you have to do 25 questions so again i'm just going to summarize everything whatever i discussed in the video part a is very important okay you have to do minimum five questions in part a in the exam part c you have to be very careful and you have to attempt 25 questions if you have done 22 question don't do, don't take more risk but if you have attempted less than 20 question take risk and do all 25 questions okay in part c part b be alert read the question properly think wisely while doing the question do at least 25 questions from part c to part b okay and all in all you have to approach the exam in a way that you should attempt for 160 plus marks then only you can expect yourself to stand somewhere between 120 130 marks in exam if you are able to attempt more than this too good okay i am just telling you the bare minimum which you should do and which approach you should go for all right so that's all from my side for this particular video all the best for your exam and i believe that you all have studied well and you all will do well in your exam okay so that's it from my side take care bye bye and see you guys in the next one take care